Hi everyone and welcome. We're down here in my wormery and I'm about to feed a couple of my bins. I just found that I was sort of out of space in my freezer and even though it's a little bit uh, ahead of schedule, I'm going to be feeding a couple of my newest bins that are down here on the lower right. And it was only six days since I last fed them, but since I estimate that each of these bins has about 5,000 worms in them each, I think that they're probably due for another replenishment of their food. I'd been waiting about a week in between feedings, but six days, um, it's worth it just to get rid of this stuff that's been piling up in the freezer. And the, um, the other bin that I wanted to tend to, to today is the one that you see up here on the top, in the middle. Uh, that at this point has turned into my oldest bin. And I've actually started to try to coax the worms out of the finished castings by feeding only in one area of the bin and um, and I wanted to just make sure that the the food supply in that one was also adequate to make sure that that migration of worms out of the finished castings continues swiftly as long as I'm down here though I just wanted to um, also mention that it's it's kind of an interesting happenstance at this point in time that I've got sort of representation of almost every phase of um, of the vermicomposting process, at least the way I do it in my wormery, represented here right now at this point in time. And I just thought I'd point it out really quick. So um, down here at the bottom, this is a brand new bin that's been just kind of sitting here and priming. It's almost a week since I built it. And right now there's no label on it. As you can see, most of my bins have labels on them. And this one has no label on it yet because no worms have been placed into it yet. So it's just been sort of built and is priming and is sort of um, going through this inoculation stage where you put some finished castings in there and then all those microbes and bacteria and fungi all start to get a foothold on the materials that were placed in there when I built the bin so that it becomes a real nice cozy spot for the worms to be introduced to at some point in the near future. And then progressing this way I've got sort of a uh, I got sort of a counterclockwise um, order here or clockwise depending on what direction you're looking at it but in terms of what will be my newest bin down here we're going counterclockwise to my two newest bins over here um, these are just in their, their typical composting mode and they're being fed regularly um, they're pretty good sized bins so at some point I'll run out of space and then I'll proceed to the next stage but for now they're just going through normal cycles of being fed breaking down materials hopefully breeding and expanding their population in there as well even though they, they are pretty crowded in there 5,000 each is a pretty good number in each of those bins but um, nevertheless those bins are actively composting and then we work our way over to this bin over here we didn't talk about this one yet because it's not getting um, handled today this one is actually sort of in a resting mode so at some point when you get to perhaps uh, your space limitation which was the case in this bin I really had no more room to continue feeding so I decided it was time to start moving it towards the finish line. So I, uh, I stopped feeding it, I don't know, maybe about two weeks ago now. And I'm just giving the worms a chance to sort of forage through that bin. They're not starving, even though I do sometimes refer to this as the starving stage. I like the foraging idea, the fact that they're sort of working their way through whatever remaining scraps of bedding food that might still be in there. And at some point in the near future, we're going to have a bin that really is broken down really completely, castings only. And, um, and then I'll start into the next phase, which is represented in this bin right here, which we're going to be checking in on. I hinted at it earlier, is that it's, um, it's in the process of trying to depopulate the finished castings, which is over in this front side of the bin. And on the back side is where I've been feeding, trying to convince the worms to make their way out of the finished compost over time move out on their own and then at some point in the future I'll start extracting the worms but for now I've not done any extractions of worms out of this bin yet and once I do they'll just be uh, relocated down into my newest bin that we talked about earlier now over here you've see, got, you can see that some uh, bins that have no labels on them indicating that they've already kind of gotten through that entire phase of um, being depopulated there are castings in there, but theoretically no worms. I know there are worms in there, and even cocoons, which will eventually hatch and become more worms, but um, I've already kind of deemed all of these bins as uh, being done. 
And I'm just waiting a little bit with these before I just empty the bins out, wash them out, and you know get them ready for future per for future assignments. I uh, I'm giving time in these bins for the material in them to sort of equalize. I've got kind of a combination of dry material and damp material in them, and I'm regularly kind of stirring them up and keeping them covered so that the moisture level in each one equalizes. And I think I'm pretty close to that being the case in each of these bins at this point. So it's just a matter of time. Probably in the next few days, I'm just going to pour off whatever's in those. Then I'll have that extra space on my shelf. And once that space frees up, I'll be able to move everything in this counterclockwise rotation, making this the oldest of my bins and shifting everything over and making space for new stuff down at the, uh, at the lower left corner. So that's just a quick recap of, uh, how each of these bins got to where they are today and it's always just a continuous process so with all that said let's move on to what the task at hand today is which is to feed these bins these two active ones and this one that's in the process of depopulation and horizontal migration let's get to work so the stuff you see here is um, a variety of different things that came out of the freezer I believe we got raspberry strawberry Maybe some cucumber, some mushroom, I believe. This stuff is frozen solid. It's in big chunks. I've had it down here for a little while, thawing out so that hopefully I can at least break these chunks into smaller bits and spread them evenly into our bins when we feed. And I've also got my other staple feeding item here, which is just some used coffee. And um, between these two things and maybe even a little grit that we're going to add, maybe even some fresh bedding, we're going to... Um, do our best to get rid of as much, if not all, of this stuff right here. All right. All right so here we have just a few stats on the bins that we're going to be dealing with today. Like I said, my two newest bins are down here. They're at the age of 19 days old, not even three weeks old, and 55 days at this point. And here we could just see how many feedings each bin has uh, received, as well as how many days have passed since the last feeding. And then the top one here is the bin that we're at this point trying to depopulate and migrate the worms out of the finished castings. That one's 116 days old with so far 15 feedings and of those 15 feedings, two of them have already been horizontal migrations and the first horizontal migration began 12 days ago. So it's just trying to use a little bit of shorthand here to make all the information fit into here. Um, so that's what we're in for today. Let's get the first of the bins out here. This 19 day old bin is the newest of my bins at the present time. I'm just going to make sure we're not accidentally taking any little wormies along for the ride when I remove this plastic covering. You can see that we've got a pretty nice thick layer of brand new fresh castings scattered across the entire top of the surface. And I believe that that's a, a clear sign that we've got lots and lots of worms in here. I guess what I'm seeing here are little tiny scraps of paper, paper that had been placed in here to sort of indicate where we had last fed. And if I'm remembering correctly, this was just a whole coffee filter and there's only little scraps of paper remaining at this point. That's also a pretty good sign to show that you've got a very active bin going on. The other thing I think that contributes to the, the rapid depletion of a piece of paper right there over the feeding zone is the covering of plastic and the, uh, and the abundant moisture on the surface. It just seems to really um, kick the composting of materials right there under the plastic into high gear. I'm just setting a couple of these things aside that I'm finding as we go. It's so cool how worms manage to sort of eat out the, um, the softer bits of something and then the harder bits remain for them to eventually also eat. But this is cantaloupe rind. And it seems like the more tough woody portions of it have remained behind and they've eaten out the more easy to eat softer bits but they'll break this all down in time. It just looks kind of cool when it's still a work in progress. After only less than three weeks of activity in this bin, since I started populating it, 
it does feel like we're um, making some really good progress. I've only been feeding down the middle. So maybe a real good indication of how we're doing would be by checking the, uh, the far edges first. So why don't we just take a peek over here just to see how things are progressing all the way down to the bottom. So down here we can still see some of the original leafy matter and stuff that was originally used to build the bin. But on top of it, there's just a huge collection of castings piled on top of it. It's kind of mixed in with other bedding materials that made up the bin originally when it was built. And here too, further examples of paper and leafy matter used to build the bin. And for now, I'm not really stirring down into that stuff. I'm just leaving it to be. And then at some point in the near future, I'll probably start trying to lift up a lot of that bedding material up off the bottom so that it has greater exposure to being consumed and broken down. But for, for now I'm not going to worry too much about it. I think today we're just going to push some of this material aside, make a little bit of room and then drop in the latest feeding. And typically there's a thing or two to be seen as we make our way to the bottom. And I always like to use this as a chance to examine how things are looking in the bin. You can see this is a busy, busy bin. Lots and lots of worms in here. And they do seem to like it right below where the feedings have been occurring because a, a lot of moisture, a lot of nourishment has made its way down into the bedding that's right beneath the food. But it does look like they could probably benefit from a little bit more bedding. So in addition to the food items that I showed earlier, I've also got a bag full of shredded paper from my office. Stuff that was just sitting around and was obsolete at this point and I figured this would make perfect bedding to include in my feedings and my worm bins. I like to put it in dry because a lot of times I'm putting it in over somewhat damp stuff and I'm also piling on material that's going to shed moisture as it thaws out as the worms start to break it down. So I believe that putting it in dry like this is, uh, is the right way to go about it. If it was dampened I might just end up with material in this bin that's a little bit too wet and I don't want that. So we'll begin by giving them some strawberries, a little bit of raspberry, my how colorful <laughs> Oops. This is some green beans. And we'll give them a little dash of mushroom too. I don't remember adding grit the last time, so I'm going to add grit this go around. The grit that I use is pulverized eggshell. And then we'll cover up here with a generous portion of coffee. Since the food itself is not that much, I believe with a nice plentiful amount of coffee sprinkled on top, it does bring us up to a nice generous feeding. So I like the way that looks. Good stuff. And I guess the stuff that we pulled off the beginning, some of this old paper, that had been covering up the feeding zone, we could just throw right down into the new feeding zone and let them use that as bedding too. Start breaking that down as well. So this bin really has some fine material in it, I must say. When I start taking all of those castings that have collected across the top surface and I start sort of mixing it together with the neighboring material, it starts to take on this real nice consistency. And you know that it's littered with bedding and whatnot. And eventually it will become all castings, but when it's at this stage, it seems to have this nice, light, fluffy feel to it. And your finished castings should really have that sort of feel to it as well, and that's usually what I'm striving for. So I'm going to have to be really careful not to allow the moisture in here to um, get any, probably no more than what's in here now. Because then all of these nice loose castings will start to get clumpy and stick together like mud.
and then it just takes time to allow that to air out and become normal again so right now I believe that this is sort of the consistency that you know I like to consider as ideal and since it's kind of difficult to tell where we fed I like to mark it so we'll just get ourselves a fresh marker for that I like to use these old coffee filters every time the coffee pot gets reloaded I take the old coffee filter and rinse it off and I stack them up and I got a whole bunch of them so I've always got a plentiful amount of fresh coffee filters to use in my composting bins so that's the newest of my bins just got fed for its uh, fourth time at this point let's get the uh, next newest bin out here all right so this is the uh, 55 day old bin and the bin that we just fed had just received its fourth feeding this is receiving its eighth I believe I started out with about the same size original build in terms of uh, the amount of bedding and whatever that had been put put in here to start the bin with and at this point it's received twice as many feedings as the other bin that we just fed so we'll be able to compare them a little bit based on that knowledge the um, plastic always seems to have a fair bit of castings attached to it. Now I'm not worried about trying to knock off the castings themselves, I'm really just trying to make sure I'm not taking any worms along for the ride. Even though it shouldn't be too dangerous for them, they'd probably be alright on that plastic if I just left them. I just worry that they might crawl off and end up on the table and I lose track of them or lose sight of them and then they end up dying. Drying and dying, because drying is not a good thing for worms. So now even though this bin is a little bit older, a little bit more mature, it does look like there's a lot more un uncomposted stuff scattered across the top. So I may have at some point added a lot of leafy material to cover the top with. So that's all good. Just like to scrape it aside a little bit to see how the castings right below it look. And like all this stuff over here, all these light colored bits of material, I had observed this previously and I think people were suggesting that the reason it looks like that is because um, the worms might just be eating some of the white paper that was placed into this bin as bedding and that that's just what their castings look like afterwards, but it's so light in color and it just makes me hope that there's nothing weird happening here. I just hope that that's correct. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. It's just that I've never seen that before. Maybe the white paper that I'm using right now has some sort of a enhanced whitener or brightener in it or something, making it a little bit lighter in color or able to stay light in color even though it goes through the innards of a worm. <laughs> comes out the other side. Now here in this bin, I think that I am sensing perhaps a little bit more moisture than is necessary in a worm bin. Unless, unless all I'm feeling is just the mass of worms in here, because it is a crazy number of worms in here. Look at that. Holy cow. The mango seeds are always a popular item, and in this case you can really see them going to town on the inside of this mango seed and all over the outside of it as well. They're just having a ball. And this mango seed is getting worked down, but it's nothing like that one right there. That's really impressive. It's like down here you could see some examples of some of the white paper that had been placed in here as bedding previously. So maybe that's the reason I'm seeing white castings. Let's see how the rest of the bedding down here looks. Here too, more of this white paper that had been placed in here as bedding. I would almost have to guess that if we look around in here, we're probably going to find more of this. Although I can't say for sure that that would really go back to the original build of the bin. I'm not sure if the original build of the bin included included all this white paper. This might have just come later in one of the subsequent feedings. Um, but I am curious, you know, since we did take a peek at how things look on the outer edges of the other bin, 
Let's see if we can get a sense of how things look on this one. So yeah, similar to what we saw in the other bin, a fair bit of the leafy matter that had been used as bedding in the original build of this bin, and a pretty high level of moisture over there too. So I'm starting to feel like maybe it's time to stop covering this bin with plastic and just allowing it to air out. And just let some of the moisture that's in here to escape because, uh, you know, in time it's just going to become overly damp and a little bit less manageable than I like. For now it's okay because the worms are probably really digging it. And it gives them, you know, good reason to go pretty much anywhere in the bin that they like because it's all fair game if it's all nice and damp. So maybe in a future maintenance visit we'll take that step of starting to agitate all that stuff off the bottom to give it a good chance at being broken down. Um, but at the end of this feeding maybe we'll simply um, not replace that plastic um, covered piece of cardboard. We'll make sure we clear off all of the castings that are stuck to it. Then maybe we'll switch over to simply a sheet of paper of some sort to cover this up with and allow for a little bit of evaporation to occur out of this bin rather than um, forcing the recirculation of moisture. I think we're pretty good from a moisture standpoint in here. So I've got uh, some more of this white paper here. I got a feeling we're going to continue to see white castings. Maybe we'll start seeing them in the other bin. It was just so much more pronounced here in this bin. Okay, so some of this is kind of frozen together, but luckily it's been thawing down here for about an hour now. So it does actually let me break it apart. This is the little bits of mushroom. I don't know if you ever smelled mushroom when it starts to spoil, but it stinks. Luckily this stuff does not have an odor, so maybe it wasn't completely spoiled. Maybe it was just cuttings from food prep. Can't remember. Well, this thing is like the uh, the root, or no, the stem I guess, right? The stem. And, um, and what remains, I guess, of something. It's hard to tell what this was. This must have been one of the contributions that my mom provided, because I can't really tell what it is. Perhaps it's just the um, the stem and the base of a head of cabbage, perhaps? Sometimes it's just kind of interesting to try to figure out what something is. <laughs> and well, the other bin received a couple yummy strawberries. Let's give these guys some as well. Not a very big feeding, oops, I must say. So I do try to tell myself regularly to, you know, not wait too long between feedings with these really heavily populated bins. Because they're just going to work their way through whatever food they're given quickly. And they're just going to need more and more as time goes on. So that looks pretty good. I guess we could start covering up over here now too. Yeah, definitely damp. Definitely a little bit more damp than I think it needs to be. So it does seem like a good time to allow for a little bit of evaporation and drying to start happening in here. So I'm going to try to avoid what I did previously in some of my other bins, which was just to allow the bin to continue getting wet when I probably should have been a little bit more attentive. And I'm actually going to switch from covering with plastic to with paper only in the hopes that it... Um, kind of helps things equalize a little bit here or at least not get you know more and more damp than it already is because I think it's plenty damp just the way it is right now nice heavily populated bin now since this cardboard with the plastic covering it is not going back I just want to also scrape off all of these castings back into the bin. I guess if I just leave it out here for a little while to dry, the castings will flake off a lot more readily. So maybe I'll just pop back down here in a little while once these castings have had a chance to dry a little bit and then that should permit me the opportunity to make sure that all the castings have been removed off of this covering. But for now that's sufficient, I think. 
Okay, so now to cover up, I took a paper bag and I kind of unfolded it and I shredded up all the little tiny fragments. And here's one of the larger cuttings. And we'll use that as a kind of a marker to show where we last fed this bin. And then on top of all that is going to become the, I guess the main primary covering of the top surface using paper only now rather than plastic. And I guess in combination with this piece of cardboard over top, we're going to be able to maintain a good amount of the moisture that's in here, but not all of it. It will start to allow a little bit of evaporation to occur. And I think that's going to help us uh, prevent the bin from getting overly wet, which is what I'm really trying to control at this point. So I've got one more bin to take care of, and that's just feeding the, uh, the migration zone of the oldest of my bins that I'm trying to depopulate. So let's get that one out here next. This bin is not quite as deep as the other two that we just um, fed. This is a somewhat more shallow bin. And it's over on this side that we set up the migration feeding pattern on. So here too I'm just kind of using a similar setup where we've got a, that's a big old worm. This was just attempting to show where I last fed. And the plastic was on top of that to help retain moisture as well. But with this paper being here, the idea is that it's going to be able to shed a little bit of its moisture if it needs to and hopefully not be too damp so that when the time comes to harvest the castings and relocate the worms, the material is a little bit more manageable than if it was overly damp. And it's interesting because the height of this feeding zone is pretty high. Typically, you know, the food gets depleted and it starts to sink. And it makes me wonder why. And I guess the hopeful side of my thinking is that it's this big because all the worms in the bin have come over here and they've mobbed this edge of the bin. And that's the reason it seems to be um, getting higher than the rest of the material. And maybe this is lower because the worms have moved out. I don't know. That's interesting. I don't know why that's happening. I'm going to just try to scrape a lot of this really loose stuff off the top of the surface. I always find that this stuff is really good to um, get placed into the feeding zone. Since it is all, you know, small particles of not yet broken down stuff, it might as well be given a chance to break down by being over where the feedings are occurring, rather than just being scattered across the top where it has virtually no chance of being eaten, especially since it's kind of dry. The worms are definitely going to be drawn to other places in the bin where the uh, material is a lot more damp and a lot more densely um, filled with edible materials. So here too we're just going to start scraping a bunch of stuff that we could use to cover up with at the end. And that's going to be all of this here. And then, um, and I guess the way I've been doing this lately is that I, I, I fed, and then I pushed everything over, and I fed again. Although, no, that's what we're going to do today. I believe last time all we did was we placed a little bit of coffee right on top of what was there already. But today we're going to start trying to shove things over a little bit. But I am curious to see where I would have to consider the cutoff point to be. You know, is this still feeding zone over here, and is everything else to the right of it? Or I guess in your case, to the left of it? Finished castings? I'm not sure. I'm going to just kind of start piling it up over here. Here we've got some scraps of previous food items. Perhaps a an apple or something. It's just interesting how it doesn't want to tear. There we go. I was able to tear it now. I think that was a chunk of apple. And since only coffee was added last time, that would go back to, I guess, maybe the original setup of the horizontal migration. And man, oh man, are there a lot of worms in here. Maybe we, when we level things off here and we get done reloading this feeding zone, we could take a look throughout the rest of the bin to see how the material looks from the perspective of whether it's getting depopulated yet or, or if there's still a long ways for that to go in terms of the material being depopulated. 
here too a whole bunch of fresh castings all over the place and tons and tons of worms hanging out in here It almost seems like we could do a haul out at some point, pretty much any time if we wanted to, and we'd probably have at least a couple thousand worms to launch off our new bin with. But I really didn't plan on doing that today. I just expected to come down here and sort of reinforce what was already happening here, just to make sure that the food supply doesn't start to become too low. So why don't we do that? We'll just allow these worms to continue hanging out here, having a big party. We'll just make a little bit of room so that we can add in today's feeding and then we'll let, let all this stuff sort of continue on. Lots of little baby worms in here too. Pretty neat. So it looks like our migration of the worms is working just as planned or as, as hoped. So sometimes I'll use leaves, paper, whatever as bedding, but in this case I'd rather have material that's pretty far along and has a good chance of being broken down rather than being whole bedding chunks when we extract stuff out of here. So that's where I'm going to start bringing some of this dry material that was coating the top back into play. I'm going to use this as the basis for placing the new food on top of. Because they'll come over for the fresh food, but all of this older bedding material and food scraps will also get a lot more attention and have a greater chance of being broken down than if it was just scattered across the top of the surface. And since the last time I reinforced the feeding in here, it was just with a little sprinkling of coffee, I thought today would be a good chance to add a pretty abundant food supply. And it probably makes good sense to do so considering the number of worms hanging out over there. So I think with a whole bunch of really delicious food items like this, we're gonna we're gonna do really well rounding up worms over here, or at least I hope so. This stuff's been out here melting for a while, so it's a little bit wet, sticking to the plastic bag. Don't remember if grit was included in the previous feeding. I don't think it was, since it was just coffee. So we'll make sure we include grit this go around. And let's see if we can get rid of the last of this coffee that I bought down here. I hope we can. It feels like it's coming out in one big square. <laughs> so I got a feeling we're going to be ready to extract worms from here any day now. But I think I am going to allow a little bit of time for this most recent feeding to get broken down, consumed to a large degree before we try extracting worms. But we're definitely making great progress. What we're seeing here is per pretty much exactly what I had hoped to see when we came in here. So I'm now beginning to just bring a lot of this stuff back that was pushed over from the feeding areas. This is going to be horizontal feeding number three. If you remember my shorthand, I was just trying to show how many of these feedings out of the overall number of feedings that this bin has received so far were horizontal feedings versus just everyday feedings, which in my case are usually placed into the middle of the bin. So this is going to be feeding number 16. And the third feeding that's happening only over here on the edge, trying to lure worms out of the finished compost and over into the edge of the bin. And now I can see why we're higher on that other side because we did sort of stack things up and then we added a bunch of food and bedding. So, no, we didn't add bedding. I'm correcting myself at this point. We just recycled bedding. So we did actually move stuff over from the surface. So although I usually try to maintain a sort of level surface across the top of my bins, in this case I think I'm just going to allow the feeding zone to be a little bit higher because there's no problem doing it that way. It's just personal preference, really. <laughs> and before we put the rest of that paper across the top, I'd love to see how things are progressing out here in the rest of the bin with regards to depopulation and migration. The castings themselves are the perfect consistency. You can see how they just crumble into itsy-bitsy tiny bits and 
here and there you do see a little food scrap here or there a little stem or something but not much but what you do see for sure is still an abundant number of worms even all the way out here on the far edge and that just tells me that there's still stuff in this material that the worms are able to feed on so for now that that's fine too it's just uh it's just going to get broken down and since there's worms all over there taking care of that for me it's a great thing if it was empty of worms but still scattered with bits then it would be a little bit of a bummer because you do like the idea of all these little tiny scraps getting broken down by the worms i guess as we get closer to the feeding zones we're probably going to see more and more worms hanging out so i believe we should start thinking about our first extraction of worms from here and I got a feeling it's going to happen at some point in the next week or so. But for now I'm going to give this uh, last feeding a little bit of a chance to get broken down. Allow more worms to make their way over into that feeding zone. Then I would have to guess that our first uh, extraction of worms is going to be a really big one. So that'll be a great way to get a new bin off to a good start. So all I've got left to do here is to get things covered up the way we found them when we first got out here with this piece of paper and this piece of plastic to allow the recirculation of moisture to occur only in the feeding area and then ongoing evaporation to happen out here but I don't know how much longer I want to let that happen because this material does have really good moisture level in it I wouldn't want it to get too dry although if it does get a little bit drier then that would just be further inspiration for the worms to leave and look for a place that's a little bit more damp and cozy so I think this will work out pretty good going forward this way so that's all I meant to take care of today and that was fun it's always fun to look at you know densely populated bins and how the worms are making progress that's just been my theme in a lot of my bins lately is just you know trying to compost with lots and lots of worms in my bins a good densely populated bin so that they break down what they get quickly and the turnaround on the bins is pretty quick too that way this way uh you know a bin can go from start to finish in in a fairly short period of time you know four or five months or whatever so all right that's it for today everyone hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did then as always please remember to give me a thumbs up I always really appreciate that. And also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's always really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.